I'm going to avoid eyes. Not because I get to choose to, but because it's a difference of two squares. So on this one first, again, we want everything on one side of the equation, then it should equal zero. So I need to subtract 81 from both sides. So I got z to the fourth. Uh, it's a four minus 81. This equals zero now. I don't know if that helps. Well, at this point, and by the way, my leading term, the unknown, has a power of four. So I should expect there to be four answers as well. And the nice thing about this is that 81 is a perfect square, but so is z to the fourth. So I can replace u, I would say, is z squared. And that's because I would have z squared squared minus 81 equals 0. Okay. So this kind of helps me change this into a quadratic. It really helps me to change this now into the difference of squares. Because 81 is a perfect square. So now what I have is u squared minus 81 equals 0. Difference of squares right there. And 81 is the same, by the way, as 9 squared. And that's why we get the difference of two perfect squares. Of course, if it wasn't a perfect square, we could do the same thing that we did with the square root of 3. You just square root that term to make it a square or a perfect square. All right, so that gives us u minus, oh, I said 3, 9. And then we got u plus 9, like this. And that equals 0, right? Well, what does u equal? u is actually z squared. So in this first binomial, I have the difference of squares again, because 9 is a perfect square. And right here, I've got the sum of two squares. So without doing any of that I garbage, uh, let's start with that first difference of squares, actually. So that would split up into z minus 3 and z plus 3. And again, if we were to FOIL this thing out, we would get z squared minus 9. But then on the other hand, we've got this z squared plus 9, right? So just going back to the rule on this thing, I would have z plus 3i. And then I would have z minus 3i, which gives us complex conjugates right there, which when I combine, and again, you could try this out by using the FOIL technique, that would give us the plus 9 that would, is what we had. That's the difference of square stuff. So, and, and I'm going to use that, that absolute value stuff. So we need both of these to equal 0, right? So that first one was z squared minus 9 equals 0, right? Well, if I was going to solve for z, then I would add 9 to both sides. That would give me z squared equals 9. And then from here, we would square root both of these. But now I have the square root of a square, which means it's the absolute value of z. The square root of 9 is 3, right? So from this, just looking back at absolute value rules, z is a negative 3, and z is also a positive 3. It's going to work exactly the same way with the 9, the plus 9. So we had z squared plus 9. Because you subtracted to the other side. Yeah, now, but if we can get this to equal 0, and that's how it is going to equal 0, uh, then we're, we're good on that binomial giving us values that would make that a true statement. So I'm going to subtract 9 from both sides. So now I got z squared equals a negative 9 because I subtracted 9 from both sides. Now I square root both of these. So that gives me, again, it's a square, the square root of something that's squared, so it's an absolute value. And this would now equal 
the yeah, so the negative in the square root gives us the i, and the 9, the square root of 9 is 3. So I did skip a couple steps in there. So from this, we could split this off into two separate, I guess, answers. Z is the positive 3i, but Z is also the negative 3i. And you'd get the same thing if you were to solve all four of these. It just, I guess it kind of shows all of the factorization on that. But technically, we don't really need to go any further. Here are two of our answers, and here are the other two. And again, if you guys were to check this in the original equation, z to the fourth equals 81, you'd find that, well, that would give us four true statements.